Leviticus chapter 11. We'll begin reading in verse number 13. The Bible says, And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the ospreage and the osprey and the vulture and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, and the owl and the nighthawk and the cuckoo and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl and the cormorant and the great owl and the swan and the pelican and the gyre eagle and the stork, the heron after her kind, and the lapwing, and the bat. All fowls that creep, going upon all four, shall be an abomination unto you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for all the good singing. We thank you for the good testimonies. Lord, we thank you for being a good God. Now help us from the word of God tonight. Help us to ever glean from your truth. Help us to ever... Uh, uh, heed the, the warning, but also embrace the truth. Help us, Lord, to ever grow closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, be with them that are working with the teens on the other side. Bless them. God, certainly help them, insulate them from all the peer pressure they face. And then, God, we do ask that, Lord, uh, you would ever help us to draw nigh to God that he might draw nigh unto us. Uh, now, Father, uh, uh, put a hedge about us, Lord help us, and Lord certainly if there's any amongst us tonight unsaved, I pray that you'd convict them, that we might see them born again before it's everlasting too late. Lord Jesus, we love you. Lord, we never get tired of hearing your name again. Have your will and way now, and we'll thank you for it, for it's in the wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. In this chapter, we find that the Lord begins to give to Moses the dietary law. When we think of the law, a lot of times we think of the Ten Commandments and we think of the thou shalts and thou shalt nots, uh, but we don't really consider all the components of the law, and one part of the law is the dietary law, things that they were not permitted to eat. If we would have started earlier in the chapter, you'll find some beets they weren't allowed to eat. Uh, I'm glad Chief's not here. Uh, it mentions you can't eat the hair, and we know he's a rabbit guy. Uh, he wouldn't like that. Uh, and then I'm a hog guy. A little earlier in this chapter, you find can't eat the swine. And uh, I'm sure glad we're not underneath the dietary law tonight. Uh, but when we get down to verse 13, down through verse 20, we find the dietary law concerning the fowls of the air and what birds uh, they were not allowed to eat. Not only do we see the dietary law mentioned, there's some in this uh, law that is detestable. In verse 13, he says two times, he mentions the word abomination. And then in verse 20, he mentions the, name, uh, the word abomination. Abomination means sinister or repulsive. Uh, and God said that these certain fowls uh, were repulsive. You were not to eat them. They were an abomination. Uh, but then he goes into great description uh, in these verses. He mentions 20 fowls. 20 different birds. And then in verse 20, he said, All fowls that creep going upon all four shall be an abomination unto you. Uh, so there's a description of these birds. Some of these birds, I know what they are, some of them I don't. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I've learned a long time ago, if i got to ask what it is, I don't need to eat it. Okay? You know, it's one of them things. All right. But notice verse number 15. I'm interested in verse 15 tonight. It said, every raven after his kind. You see that? Most of us know what a raven is, and raven's mentioned several times throughout the scriptures. I'm interested where it says, after his kind. The raven is of the Corvus genus um, makeup. Its closest relative is the magpie. Remember the old cartoons with the magpies? Two of us. All right, what a blessing. The magpie is also known as the crow. I want to preach with God's help this evening, coming out of camp meeting, coming out where folks got so much help. I want to preach on watch out for the crows. 
watch out for the crows. Uh, can I say there are spiritual crows? They're an abomination. Can I say these spiritual crows will uh, seek to take the seed away that God has started to plant in your life? In the parable of uh, the sower in verse 13, it says the fowls came and they got the seed that fell by the wayside. They wanted to steal away the seed before it started producing fruit. And I promise you, if you was here during camp meeting, you got some help. Uh, 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 listen, if you were here and you paid attention, you did get some help. Uh, uh, whether it was uh, somebody got up and sang. I mean, the Hensons were a real blessing. Uh, uh, can I say uh, the Lancasters were a real blessing. Uh, the Matthews were a real blessing. Brother Daniel was a real blessing. Singing a bless you. All the preaching was wonderful. Uh, I especially enjoyed Brother Bobby Cato's message. Uh, I don't know that that wasn't the message of the whole camp meeting. Uh, but I'm here to tell you the preaching, the singing blessed you. Uh, but I'm here to tell you Mondays are coming. And when Monday comes, uh, uh, the world's going to hit you. And if you're not careful, there's going to be some crows hanging around uh, trying to steal away the joy you got, uh, trying to steal away the help you got, uh, trying to steal away everything that God tried to do for you this very week. Uh, and can I say some things, give you some interesting facts about crows? First of all, they adapt to most habitats. No matter where you find yourself, whether in Indiana Amelia, Hebron, Florence, wherever you find yourself, you can find a crow. They adapt to most habitats. Hmm? Can I say something else about crows? Crows avoid hot places. You know why you didn't hear any crows around the last couple of days? Because it was pretty hot around here. God started a blessing, and God started moving, uh, and crows don't like it when it's on. You know what I'm saying? Crows don't like it when it's hot. Yeah, but I, I guarantee you when things get to cooling off around your house, uh, 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 around your prayer life, uh, around your Bible study, uh, uh, on your job, uh, uh, even around the church house, when things start cooling off, look out for the crows. Mm -hmm. Best way to keep crows away is keep the fire going. Can I say something else about crows? They have a vast appetite. They will feed on anything. If you ever heard me preach that message on an eagle, eagles only eat fresh meat. God's people need to come out every time the doors are open because we've got to feast on something fresh. The manna only lasted that day. It would spoil for the next day and it'd breed worms. Uh, you can't live off yesterday's blessings. You can't live off of yesterday's blessings. Oh, you can go back and go back and glean and you can go back and find some help. But you can't live on that. You need the Lord to bless you every day and meet with you every day and help you every day. God's people don't feed on junk. But crows do. You know why some people have no problem living on this thing? They're feeding on it. Hmm? Hmm? There's some people feed on that. There's some people feed on the music of the world. Some people feed on the news of the world. Some people feed on other churches stuff. Hmm? They can feed on just about anything. You're telling on yourself. God spreads a table and God's people feed from that. Hmm? You know why I don't read a false Bible? It don't satisfy my appetite. It wasn't written by God, so I don't have any need for it. Hmm? You know why I don't listen to contemporary Christian music? Because it don't have any soul in it. And by soul, I mean something that glorifies Jesus Christ. Hmm? It don't feed me. Hmm? You, know, you, you know what? There's a lot of uh, southern gospel music that don't feed me. Hmm? Mm, there's a lot of southern gospel groups that have a lot of talent, but they don't have a touch. I'd rather have folks get up and mm, maybe not have all the talent, but they know the master, yeah. and that'll feed me. Are you listening? But there's some people, they can just feed on anything. They're like chameleons. No matter who they're with, that's what they are. you got to watch them. They're crows. Hmm? you got to watch folks that can feed on the world and be satisfied. Can I say something else about crows? 
they have an annoying call. Ha! Ah! Ha! Ah! Ha! Ah! About three of them, you're about ready to pull your brains out. You know what I'm saying? Hmm? Anybody remember Hee Haw? There's something about that call. You can't get over it. Hmm? So we need to watch out for the crows. Huh? You know, the Bible says that there are some that are clouds without water. They come into your feast. What they do is they drain you of spirituality. Maybe you don't know this, but not everybody comes to church is saved and there because they want to hear about the Son of God. There's some people that the devil plants. He plants tares among the wheat. There are some that are wolves in sheep's clothing. There are some that are crows among the eagles. Hmm? Got to watch out for the crows. Well, let me give you a few things about crows. First of all, crows pester. Never forget a couple years ago, it was a beautiful spring morning. I mean, just beautiful. No humidity, beautiful day. And I, I was here in the office, and I threw up my windows just reading the Word of God, enjoying the nice cool breeze coming in my office and everything. And for whatever reason, Brother Phil, there was a crow sitting at Bradford Pear right outside my office. And he started that nasty call. And he started that nasty call. I didn't have a shotgun, but what I had would have done the job. Are you listening? And he started that, so I had, to, I had to put down my window. Brother Bob, that call was so nasty, I could hear it through the glass. And he just out there, out there, out there. I couldn't take it no more. Miss Nick called, and I said, I'm going to kill this crow. It's just driving me nuts. And I'd open up that door, and it'd fly down to the light post down there. And then he'd come back, and have it, for three days, that thing hung around. All I was trying to do is study the Bible so I could have a message for Wednesday night. Are you listening? They'll pester you. They'll aggravate the devil out of you. You ever come to church, try to get the mind of God on the way here, come ready to hear about heaven, come ready to hear some great singing, some great preaching, and get in on what God's going to do, and somebody just come up and pester the devil out of you? Might be a crow. Hmm. Hmm. might be a crow does not the Bible teach us that we're to edify one another we're to esteem others we preached on that this morning where in the Bible does it say we're to aggravate the far out of one another now listen we're all human every now and then somebody can get on your nerves every now and then the preacher get on your nerves but if somebody's always getting on your nerves they might be a crow Hmm? Hmm? just might be watch out for crows hmm? and I agree a little buckshot do a good job on a crow but anyway can I say something else about crows they're phony there's nothing redeeming about them they're phony they'll pester you and they're phony they got a phony handshake they got a phony smile they got a phony demeanor they got a phony countenance would to God that everybody came to church was real and sincere and genuine. But not everybody is. Hmm? That's why you get to build yourself up on your most holy faith. Because there are some phony balonies. They're crows. You gotta watch out for crows. Can I say this about crows? They procrastinate. Crows sit around and do nothing. Hmm? You look at some of the birds. Little hummingbirds are always hard at work. Songbirds are always singing. Hmm? You, you've got other little birds, robins and doves, and all. They're building nests. They're doing something. They're productive. You know what a crow does? Nothing. But aggravate. Can I say there are some, they never do anything around the house of God. They're quick to tell you what to do. But they just sit around and do nothing. Hmm? Can I say, I said this during camp meeting. The Bible said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Those that are born again take on the nature of God, just like you take on the nature of chief. That's why you like to eat possum like he eats possum. You know, it's just one of them deals. Look at him, he's going, I don't even know possum. Bless God, no. Hmm? Child of God as a giving spirit 
when you got somebody that's always got a taking spirit, watch out, it might be a crow. Hmm? Hmm? Sooner or later, somewhere, it's going to break out on them to do something around the house of God. If they belong to Him, they procrastinate. They sit around and do nothing. Hmm? Take up space and then complain that the space isn't kind enough to them. Hmm? Can I say something else about crows? Crows pout a lot. They're, listen, even physical crows, in reading and studying on them, it said even physical crows tend to hold grudges against other birds. You know why that crow hung around for three days? Because it knew it upset me. It was holding a grudge against me. Uh, can I say their crows pout? They always hold grudges. Somebody's always done them wrong. Somebody's always mean to them. Somebody didn't treat them fair. Somebody, let me help you all something. Grow up. Life's not fair. Somebody's always going to do you wrong. Somebody's always going to say something about you. Somebody's always going to mistreat you. Especially if you live for Christ. People aren't going to like you. Uh, 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 people are going to find fault in you. That's okay. Uh, they found fault in our Savior. Uh, Jesus said the world hated him. The world would hate us. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, God's never been bad to you. Uh, God's never been unkind to you. Uh, God's always shown you grace and mercy and love and kindness. Uh, and really, God's people have always been gracious and kind to you. Uh, and you sitting there holding a grudge, uh, blaming the world for all your problems, it might be your crow. Always hold grudges. Hmm. And those that hold grudges because they got smudges in their life. You're welcome. It didn't cost you anything. Hmm? Can I say something else about crows? They peck. As in hunt and peck. They're scavengers. They hunt and peck in people's lives. Now, let me go see what I can get from Tommy. Not much there. Let me go see what I can get from Tony. Not much there. They're just bouncing around, seeing what they can take from people. They hunt and peck all the time. Hmm? They're scavengers. Hmm? Can I help you something? If you wait on the Lord, you'll find He'll renew your strength. Hmm? Listen, I've got a problem. Let me go talk to my buddy Ray. It's so good of you led to singing tonight. That's a blessing. i got a real problem that for people that always think the church owes them something. Now listen, I've, I've been your pastor going on 25 years. Not one time have you ever asked the church for anything. And when you got down and men come cut your grass, it killed you to sit there and watch people cut your grass. You know why? Because you're not a crow. Hmm? I can go around this room and start naming people that I've known for more than a decade that have never asked a thing from the church. Would, would die before they ask anything of the church. But then them crows, they think the church owes them something. They constantly want the church or people in the church to give to them. They do that. Why? Because they're a crow. They're a scavenger. Hmm? You know the only thing we deserve? Hell. Hmm? And I thought about this. Well, there must be some crows in here. There's some not liking this right now. Huh? But I'm telling the truth whether you like it or not. You've got to watch out for them. God, I guarantee you they're going to show up. Hmm? Gotta watch out for them crows. Trying to educate some of you, because I know what I know what happens, brother Eddie. You've been at this long thing, but I know what, a long time. But I know what happens. We come to church. We're expecting everybody to be here to be be here for the right reason, because they love Jesus and they want to see Jesus magnified. And you come in, you come in looking for Jesus. You don't come in to look for somebody to steal your wallet. But crows are looking for your pocketbooks. 
They're going to try and steal away your joy. Why do you think the devil plants them here? Because we don't look for them. We're coming and looking to see Jesus high and lifted up. And while we're looking at him, crows are looking around, seeing who they can feast off of, hmm? who they can rob from. The thief coming not for, but for to steal, kill, and destroy. Hmm? There's spots in our feast. Can I say this? Crows are very prideful. They're easily offended. You know what I like about God's people? There are times when the pastor has to talk to somebody and talk to them as a pastor, as a father, and has to, you know, kind of deal with some harsh things. People have got the right spirit. You know what they do? They hug his neck and they're thankful. They're thankful that he cares enough to, to talk to them in that way and thankful that he's seen something in their life that may not have been good for them and they're thankful that he was able to deal with them over it and they appreciate it. Uh, but I guarantee you a, pro, a crow has so much pride uh, that even if the preacher looks at them, boy, they get all upset. Who does he think he is? Well, he knows what he is. He's a sinner saved by the grace of God. It worth nothing. Uh, uh, but uh, the Lord saved him. The Lord called him. The Lord put him in a position. Uh, and he's God's man. And as God's man, he has to watch out for the flock. But there's some people who don't like the preacher being the preacher. They just want him to be their buddy. Hmm. Crow's got a lot of pride. They're very easily offended. Uh, they just don't like it if everything don't go their way, if they're not singled out and patted on the back and told how wonderful they are. Hmm? They're easily offended. They're prideful. And I thought about this. Crows are pretentious. They're self-absorbed. Everything is always about them. They don't care about anybody else. Just like the other night. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't orchestrate. I just sit back there enjoying the hints and singing. Brother Daniel Waters gets up and comes and puts some money in the plate. And folks just start coming and putting money in the plate. Now listen, I, I'm in a lot of meetings, a lot of camp meetings. I know what's going on. And a lot of camp meetings, you be in a camp meeting, God touches your, your, your heart, you just go up and put some money in the plate. By the way, our camp meeting's the only camp meeting I've been in the last decade. We don't take up an offering. God had already provided. But... That started happening. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, what are we going to do with all that money? I didn't know how much was there, but and I'm thinking, well, the Hensons are singing. I know they got some needs in their life. Let's just give it to them. When I said that, everybody got excited. But I guarantee you if there was a crow sitting there thinking, thinking, well, how come you didn't take up an offering for me? I didn't take up an offering for them. What happens when crows are around and you're good to people, they get mad because you wasn't good to them. Crows think they deserve something. Because again, they're self-absorbed. It's all about them. A crow never comes and says, Preacher, what can I do to help somebody else? A crow always says, Preacher, how come you're not helping me? They're self-absorbed. I said, all that, say this. You come to church and you start hearing a call, an odd call. Maybe in the fellowship time. Maybe in the handshake time. Maybe at the other point in the service. You hear an odd call in or around the church. It might not be a Christian. It might be a crow. You watch out for the crows. Crows will take you down that wrong road what Brother Phil was singing about. Crow gets you in a bad spirit. Crow gets your eyes off of Jesus. A crow will needle you and aggravate you where your spirit is no longer lining up with the Lord's. Watch out for them crows. I promise you, as good as God's been around here lately, there's some crows headed this way. So what do you do about the crows? 
draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. But the best thing in the house of God, if you spot a crow, is to warn everybody else about the crow. Bill's a crow. If he's a crow, you need to let everybody know. You know what happens when a crow's exposed? The crow will fly away. They don't like to be exposed. You'd think that nasty call would expose them, but yet there are some who are not looking for them. The Bible says mark them and avoid them. How do you hand a crow? Mark them. Let everybody know. Hey, watch out for that booger. That's a crow right there. You start marking them and avoid them, they'll fly away. Because there's nothing left for them to scavenge over. You listening? Watch out for the crows. In the days to come, there might be some crows exposed. If so, watch out for them. Hold on to your pocketbook. Protect your heart. Don't let a crow rob the joy God's given you around here. Don't let a crow offend you to where you let them win. Mm-mm. I don't like losing. And I sure don't like to lose in spiritual realms. Don't let a crow defeat you. God's been good to you. Worship the Lord. Keep your eyes on the Lord. And don't let crows rob you of the goodness of God. That's all I got tonight. But I tell you what. Maybe you need to come and say, God, help me to see if there's a crow in my life. Maybe you need to come and say, God, insulate me from the crows. Maybe you need to come tonight and pray for a lost loved one. Maybe you need to come tonight and just tell the Lord how much you love him. Maybe you need to come and thank him you're allowed to eat swine. Hallelujah. But I know one thing. The Lord's always good. Folks are coming. Miss Renee, just come play something softly on the piano. Maybe God's done something special for you tonight. Maybe it's a blessing hearing the Schneckenberger sing or one of these songs. Bless. Maybe you need to just come tell him thank you. So let's all stand. She's coming to the piano. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We know the devil would like nothing better than to divide folks and distract folks. And he send crows or wolves or whatever he can, but you said greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. So help us, Lord, to spot the crows. Help us resist all their aggravation. God, there may be somebody here tonight that's a crow. Expose them. There may be somebody here tonight that thinks they're saved and they're not. I pray you'd roll the scales off their eyes so they can see. And they're being held in clutch of the devil. God, deliver their soul. God, I pray you just do work in our hearts and our lives. Thank you for being a good God. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. I have your way in this invitation. A lot of folks in the altar, Lord, whatever their need is, bless them and help them. God, we'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.